I can be a working mom working 12 hours a day. I can work the world. I can travel around the world. I can do one week I'll do Asia, the other week I'll do Europe, and the week after I'll do North America. No, I'm fine. Thank you. Really great. Thank you for giving me that project. You can trust me. I'll do it. I'll work hard. Thank you very much. Ik, ik, I can't breathe. I'm suffocating. I have no air. My name is Lisbeth Dillon, and the two ladies, the two faces you saw, I've been both. I've been wearing many masks, and the last one wasn't a mask. I'll tell you how it happened. Um, I've been starting in the 80s, uh, starting at IKEA, and in the 80s, IKEA went very quickly with European expansion, so I got on a European projects, just flying. <coughs> Love to leave my country village, so up on a go. Not a lot of women, not a lot of role models, because I'm Dutch, you might hear the accent. And there we stay at home, working moms. So in the 80s, do European projects. In the 90s, I got my biggest gift ever. I became a mom. And my daughter, Marine, still the biggest gift ever. So what I did is, IKEA, I followed IKEA. And in the 90s, IKEA went worldwide. So hop, Lisbeth goes worldwide. So that's what the life I had. Europe, Asia, North America. And I traveled around for eight years. And I do the mom life, and I do the suitcase life. Not a lot of role medals. Not in meeting rooms, not a lot of women, not a lot of men. So I toughened up. I really felt like a strong cookie and I felt I was like, hmm, was on a high. Um, 2000, I land in, uh, in IKEA, Belgium, and I'm being the number two, leading 1,200 people. And I start for the first time being able to put things on the business agenda that I thought was important. So I put women on the business agenda. Women as consumers, women as employees. Now it's a lot about talking about uh, gender. 2001, it wasn't. But I felt really happy that I could put women on the agenda and give women a voice. What I was not to know at that time, that I was soon about to, to lose my own voice. Because I was on this adrenaline, I was this high, following this high-flying golden girl, everything went well, happy-go-lucky, flying around the world. And what happened is I got a Christmas gift, 2003, two weeks, two days before Christmas, um, they thought I had a tumor, they took it away, and by cutting that far, or that much, they damaged my vocal cords, and that means that you can't speak. So I was diagnosed to be 70%, 7-0, lifelong handicapped. Lisbeth, you will not work ever again. Couldn't speak, was pushed around by wheelchairs, um, with the girlfriends through wheelchairs in the hospital, so no, it didn't look that I would ever work again. You can see still me doing this to get air. Uh, but I thought, no, 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 my life is Ikea, I belong to this Ikea tribe, and I need to go back to my team, I can't let them drop them, you just, you know, they need to be able to trust me. So, two treatments, and four months later, I'm back at Ikea, and I don't tell anyone that I still have a handicap, it was still 30%, as it is today. I covered up, I just worked harder. Feelings off, work brains on, and go, go, go. And I felt like <coughs> Miss, Mrs. Lucky, how good I was how high flying, I felt like self-going. Never wanted a big career, that wasn't my aim. Just wanted to be financially independent. And it worked. What I didn't know was that I was soon about to crash. 2006, schmack. I had done two, three years of denial on my body. And that meant that 2006, I would get a massive burnout. And today, in 2012 and 13, you get a lot of figures about, there's a lot of being talked about. Not a lot of people dare to talk about it, or dare to show. It's still a shame. And I felt the same, like, um, that means that I'm, I'm not good enough. I can't do it. I, I'm, I'm a weak one, you know, I couldn't. But Ikea thought the opposite. The Ikea said they were fantastic. They said, you know what, you just rest a few months, maybe you need four months, maybe you need a year. You'll come back, because we want you as number two and trainee CEO. I was CEO trainee in, um, in Ikea Belgium with 1,200 people, so you come back and you do the same for Ikea Holland. And I thought like, oh, oh great, they think I can do it. But I was so addicted and such, on such a high that I was ready to neglect my body again for that nice promotion. I was licking my wounds at home, quite small. I was not as I am today, I was small like this. Because who was I without IKEA? I had done over 20 years of IKEA. My whole identity was my work. I was eating, sleeping, breathing IKEA. But I stepped out. 
I stepped out and I said goodbye to IKEA and I started my own company and I, it's called She Works With Women where I'm like a kind of GPS. I start with where are you in life, whether it's women, men or a group, so it doesn't matter. Where are you in life, in life really? Where would you want to be and how do you get there? And normally in the corporate world, the success criteria for good stuff is power and money. And what I do is I add another criteria to the GPS. I add that makes you travel new roads. I add well-being and humanity. Because I think society and the planet asks for that new building blocks to come. So what I'm doing is helping and looking around. Well, what happens is when I got this burnout, still having this problem, I got another gift, which I wasn't aware of at that time. I got much better eyes and much better ears because it hurts for me very often to talk. I'm very much in many days of silence. When you are silent, you go into yourself. When you're silent, you can't blame anyone else. You can just look and look, what is going on in me? You can't blame someone else. You're responsible for yourself. So with this new set of ears and eyes, where I observe what is said and what is not said, where I'm forced to shut up, not bubble around, I see a lot of things is going on. And I see that I wasn't on my own. Today, World Health Organization <coughs> claims that the mental uh, disease will be, the t in 2020, the biggest reason for people to drop out of work. World Economic Forum has it on the agenda, so it's getting big. Now, is this a sad story? No, because what do I see around me? I see a lot of masks, people covering up that they're stronger than they are, or try to be better than they are. Because we always need to be better, better, better. Pleasing others, caretaking of others. Not probably listening to yourself. So what happens, so watching at that time, what happens is that I see many masks, many people in denial, many men looking for balance. There is, a, of course, yes, a lot of women in my clients and seeing balanced women, but there is a lot of men who are fed up with the power guys, having to be the power guys. So is this a story of, oh, this is tough, life is tough? Not at all. It's the opposite, because with the new eyes and the new ears, I can see that we're leaving the era of competition. That's the past, that's 20th century, where each time you had to be better than the others to be heard to seen. I think we're going into a new era, and that's the era of co-creation, of, um, uh, how do you call it, it's a network society. So in a network society there is co-creation and there is co-operation. And there I think an example, women are excellent. Because a network society where it's asked to cooperate and to co-create, that means that you need extremely well in securing that you bring to the table what you're best at. In the former era of competition you always had to be someone else that one that you're not, because you have to be better than the other. In the new era, I think you can concentrate on being on yourself, just your best self. Because co-creation and co, co, for, so cooperation sorry, uh, means that the world, as it looks today, is a kind of a mess. We have a society where we have economic problems, we have ecologic problems, we have social problems. We can't go on in the rat race like we did today what we did until today. So I think we are in the era where a network society is moving on, where what you're not good at, you can outsource, you can find in the digital world, you can find it everywhere. So the new era, era asks for you to bring the best of yourself to the table. So you can't hide behind the masks, you can't hide behind denial, you can't hide behind anger or blaming others. You're responsible for your own life. And I think Arianna Huffington is from Huffington Post said it lovely if I conclude about how my life was. Arianna Huffington said, well, women now have access to both money and power, like I had. But we don't even have time to enjoy it. We're too tired to enjoy it. <laughs> because we burn the candle at two ends. And that's why I think there is important that in the new era, we look for new criteria on, the G on your GPSs, which is not just power and money, but well-being and humanity as building blocks for the future. So if I wrap up, I can say that I've never talked about this burnout until this October, 
uh, last October because I got inspired by Brene Brown, which is a role model for me, the power of vulnerability, very well-known TEDx talk. So I always went to speeches talking about my career, you know, the, the golden girl, never talked about the burnout. But today I'm here quite naked, I feel like I've stripped because I've been quite vulnerable. It was much easier to show you the power lady of Ikea. I know that power mask, I can still do it. I can go with my power looks, still have it in me, still have it. But I share you the way down and the lessons I learned because I don't want you to go there. And I want you to be at your very best because I think there's three lessons or three reasons for hope that I would like to reach out. Don't do what I did. Be, dare be vulnerable, don't use the power mask. Dare be vulnerable, you're good enough. Second point is listen to your inner voice. Use nature, use silence, but your inner voice, you know, your heart tells you what you should do, what your path should be. And then thirdly, love yourself, because you're great. And love yourself for who you truly are, no matter what. And then I hope you have a great ride. Thank you.